My name is Cheng Zhui Yu, and I am a 2021 Arnold L. Beckman Postdoctoral Fellow in the lab of Dr. Philip Gortz at the University of California, San Diego. In the Gortz lab, one of the primary health challenges we are aiming to address is the challenge of type 2 diabetes, a chronic disease characterized by high blood glucose levels and insulin resistance. When you eat, your body's pancreas secretes insulin, a key hormone in regulating your body's metabolic system, and plays a pivotal role in stimulating your fat and muscle tissue to uptake glucose and stopping liver glucose production. However, when your body's cells become insulin resistant, insulin can no longer work as effectively in regulating your body's metabolism, and over time, your body loses control of its metabolic system, leading to type 2 diabetes. So it's no secret, of course, that type 2 diabetes is right now a global health burden, not only in the United States, but also third world countries are really afflicted by it. According to the International Diabetes Foundation today, 540 million people are afflicted by the disease, with 90% of those having type 2 diabetes, the acquired form. The unfortunate association of our high-fat Western diet expanding globally, as well as a sedentary lifestyle, the prediction is that in 2045, 790 million people will suffer from the disease. Obesity is a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, that is clear. And there are drugs that can help with weight loss, which will improve the disease. However, today we still do not fully understand what is at the basis of insulin resistance. Within this key health challenge, our central focus is on the fat or adipose tissue, which in recent decades have gained increasing importance in its central role in the body's metabolic system. The adipose tissue plays a dynamic role in energy storage and release in addition to communicating with a slew of other organs to regulate the body's metabolic system. Understanding the dynamic properties of adipose tissue and its role in insulin sensitization can open up new pathways for therapeutics that can help regain both glucose regulation and insulin sensitization in type 2 diabetes patients. In the Gortz lab, we approach this problem through the lens of glycobiology. Beyond the traditional DNA, RNA, and protein paradigm of biology, these biomolecules can interact with and be modified by sugars and polysaccharides, which adds a layer of complexity that forms the basis for the diversity of biological processes and structures that we see today. Within the adipose tissue, we focus on a polysaccharide known as heparin sulfate. Heparin sulfate is a polysaccharide modified with negatively charged sulfate groups in clusters along the sugar polymer and are presented on the cell surface where they play a role in cell signaling processes. We want to understand how heparin sulfate polysaccharides plays a role in healthy adipose tissue, specifically in glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity. To begin our study, we developed two in vivo mouse models where we genetically knock out two key enzymes in the production of heparin sulfate in the adipose tissue. In one mouse model, we knock out an enzyme known as NDST1, which will reduce the amount of sulfation on the heparin sulfate polymer. In another mouse model, we knock out an enzyme known as EXT1, which will effectively remove all heparin sulfate presented in the adipose tissue. With these mouse models, we then stress their metabolic systems by placing them on a high-fat diet over 16 weeks. After which, we then test their metabolic systems by giving them an injection of glucose or insulin to test their insulin sensitivity and their ability to regulate blood glucose. We see that both modifications to heparin sulfate in the genetic knockout mice showed worse glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity compared to wild-type mice with normal heparin sulfate. These results show the critical importance of heparin sulfate in glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity. Our next question is, what processes is heparin sulfate mediating on the molecular level that is contributing to glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity? Recently, 
A hormone known as fibroblast growth factor 1, or FGF1, has been shown to play a pivotal role in not only healthy adipose tissue expansion, but also glucose regulation and insulin sensitization. It is also known that FGF1 interacts with heparin sulfate to undergo its signaling processes. Thus, we wanted to ask the question, how does the composition and presentation of heparin sulfate in the adipose tissue affect FGF1 and its metabolic effects? To do so, we turn to an in vitro adipocyte cell line known as 3T3L1, which we prepare over a two-week process involving multiple chemical cocktails. With these cells, we then take a multi-pronged approach to assess FGF1's heparin sulfate dependence. First, we use a cocktail of enzymes known as heparin lyases to remove the cell's native heparin sulfate. Second, we use protein engineering to mutate out FGF1's heparin sulfate binding ability. With these approaches, we then assess the heparin sulfate dependence on two key signaling pathways of FGF1 the phosphorylation of ERK signaling kinases, and the mRNA expression levels of glucose transporter 1, or GLUT1. We see that for both signaling events, they are significantly hindered by the elimination of the cell's native heparin sulfate or by the elimination of heparin sulfate binding of FGF1. Taken together, these results show the critical importance of heparin sulfate in glucose regulation and signaling by FGF1 and can pave the way towards possible therapeutics that target heparin sulfate as a way to treat type 2 diabetes. I'm immensely grateful and honored to have had the support of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation to pursue this work. Dr. Arnold O. Beckman is a timeless inspiration to all that have worked in any scientific field. His scientific brilliance is only matched by his unwavering curiosity to address any challenge in all facets of science and society, whether it is chemical research, agriculture, or medicine. But beyond his lasting scientific achievements, Dr. Beckman and Mabel Beckman's greatest gift to science is their dedication to the support and nurture of young scientists. It has been the greatest honor of my life to have been a part of Dr. Beckman's legacy. Thank you, Dr. Beckman, and thank you to the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation.